During the final years of World War II, German engineers designed one of the most radical aircraft of the era, the Horton Ho 229. With its sleek flying wing configuration and jet propulsion, the Ho 229 seemed like something from the future. This documentary explores its design, okay, features, and legacy, while also touching on its unique counterpart, the infamous B-17 ball turret. Mounted beneath the B-17 flying fortress, the Sperry A-2 ball turret was a spherical gun emplacement, infamous for its cramped conditions and high vulnerability. This variant, installed on B-17F models, could not be retracted into the fuselage, unlike similar turrets used on the B-24 and B-32. The turret had a 44-inch diameter and weighed 850 pounds. Its iconic appearance came from plexiglass domes mounted on steel and aluminum supports, forming a nearly perfect sphere. Inside, the gunner lay curled in a fetal position, knees tucked and feet in stirrups, operating two 50-caliber machine guns. Entry was only allowed after the aircraft reached 9,000 to 10,000 feet. Because the guns extended 36 inches beyond the aircraft's ground clearance, they had to be locked at an 85-degree angle during takeoff and landing. Inside, the gunner operated a heated suit, oxygen supply, and radio communication all from within this tiny rotating sphere, connected via brush-style wiring that avoided cable entanglement. Cocking the guns required a pulley system, since the gunner lacked the leverage to charge them manually. While the turret was well-armed, the gunner wore neither a parachute nor body armor due to space constraints, relying instead on a parachute harness with the chute stowed inside the fuselage. In stark contrast to the bulky B-17 stood the sleek Horton Ho 229, Germany's experimental flying wing fighter. Developed by the Horton brothers, it aimed to combine stealth, speed, and agility. It was powered by twin Junkers Umo 004B turbojets and featured an innovative wing-only design without vertical stabilizers, giving it a low radar profile and exceptional aerodynamics. The cockpit was enclosed under a curved, two-part canopy, granting the pilot an unobstructed view both forward and rearward. All primary flight instruments and engine readouts were arranged neatly on a central dashboard, including altimeters, fuel indicators, oxygen gauges, engine RPM meters, and even an advanced radio bearing indicator. On the left and right consoles, the pilot had access to fuel switches, flap controls, brake parachute levers, and throttle systems. Foot brakes and rudder pedals completed the control scheme. The startup sequence was detailed and technical. The pilot began by turning on the battery, inverter, and generators. After ensuring the throttle was at idle, the engines were primed, brought to 800 RPM, then ignited. At 1800 RPM, fuel flow was engaged and the aircraft accelerated slowly. Takeoff occurred at roughly 150 km hour, and once airborne, the landing gear retracted into hydraulically sealed bays, creating a sleek profile. With its low wing loading, the Ho 229 required only a short runway estimated at 1,100 meters, offering a tactical advantage in bombed-out Germany. Its cruising speed was 632 kilometers per hour, with an estimated top speed of 977 kilometers per hour, faster than both the P-51 Mustang and the Spitfire. Though the prototype examined by the Allies was unarmed, the Ho-229 was designed to carry two Rheinmetall Borsig cannons, either the MK-103 or MK-108, both 30mm calibers. These weapons could fire up to 420 armor-piercing rounds per minute, fed via belt systems. It was also designed to carry two 500 kg bombs, though at the expense of range and speed. Unlike most aircraft of its time, the Horton was designed to withstand up to 7 Gs. In tests, it reportedly endured 12.6 Gs well beyond safe human limits. Landing was assisted by a braking parachute, allowing the aircraft to touch down safely, even on short runways. The aircraft's futuristic look sparked decades of speculation about its stealth capabilities. Reimer Horton claimed he intended to coat the Ho-229 in radar-absorbing carbon dust. In 2008, National Geographic and Northrop Grumman tested a replica to evaluate its radar profile. While it was not a true stealth aircraft by modern standards, the design did reduce radar visibility and featured impressive maneuverability. Despite its groundbreaking innovations, 
the Ho-229 never saw combat. Only three prototypes were built and the end of World War II halted its development. The final prototype, V-3, was captured and is now housed at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Its influence lives on. Over five decades later, the US B-2 Spirit stealth bomber became the first operational combat aircraft to successfully utilize the flying wing concept validating the Horton brothers' vision. The Horton Ho-229 was decades ahead of its time, a rare convergence of stealth, speed, and unconventional design. Alongside defensive marvels like the B-17 ball turret, it represents the high stakes and technological leaps of World War II aviation. Though it never took to the skies in combat, its legacy shaped the future of modern aircraft. For more detailed videos on WR2 Aviation, check out our feature on the B-17 Flying Fortress, and don't forget to subscribe for more history that flies under the radar.